So here I thought I was going to have a massive, angry, loud rant, but then it feels like something very nasty happened to my throat and there was a cactus involved. The Ultra Bowl was not there to film it, sadly, so you can't find that on the interwebs if you catch my drift. But my thoughts and the title of this video remain the same. Centurion is garbage and hand traps need to be banned. Let's dive on into this, shall we? Oh, there's going to be some mad people up in this comment section. Hear your boy out first. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, aim for lr 32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button so that my voice can feel a little bit better. Um, I want to talk to you today about these deck build packs because, Jesus Christ, I've been trying to play test Centurions so badly, and uh, the, the deck sucks. Like, I don't know how else to put it, right? And it's so frustrating to me because... I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are going to say Avery Centurion's a bad deck. It's tier two or rogue at most. There's nothing special about it. I understand that. It's a Calamity Turbo deck. I still think the deck is fun, though, because of the fact that it is just basically a King Calamity Turbo dot deck. Because when you crap out that King Calamity, assuming that, you know, you resolve it properly and then it doesn't miss timing because it's a when effect, <laughs> uh, you just win the ball game. Like... Unless you're going against something like Labyrinth that just like wants to set back row basically and pass, then they can still kind of play the game. But you can obviously adjust how you're going to play out your turn based upon that, right? And what's cool about Centurion is that the deck, at least right now, out post Valiant Smashers, has a lot of non engine space. So I've seen builds, I'm not saying you should do this because honestly, I think that this is a bad idea where you can play not 12, not 15, but 18 damn hand traps. And to me, like that's really cool because that means that you're kind of like Sky Striker in that regard, where you don't have a lot of main deck monsters, so therefore you can play about 12 to 15 hand traps to help it stun out the opponent, for lack of a better term, and then be able to build your board. You could also make the argument that because of that, Centurion is more like a going second deck, similar to Sky Striker, than it is going first. With that being said, it's a King Calamity Turbo deck. You're probably going to want to go first and make the King Calamity on the opponent's turn. But what's so frustrating to me is that because of the fact that we're in a damn diverse format, which don't get me wrong, that is a good thing, there are so many hand traps that people are playing out the ass because people don't want to just auto-lose to the random dude at their regional or locals playing Monarchs and the player just happened to not brick. So they're playing things like Valor and Imperm just to have six copies of Valor, basically, and then three copies of Ash because Ash is broken AF, and then three copies of Nib so that they can shove a giant gallstone up my ass. Like, it's so toxic. It's so asinine. And it makes me realize, and... I blame the meta decks that are already established in the game right now and hand traps. It makes these archetypes that come out of these deck build packs just garbage for the inherent fact that they don't have as much support given to them compared to something like, say, even like Tier Element. Because Tier Element is an established deck. It came out in a core booster set. Yes, it's had hits on the ban list, but inherently that support is better because they have the quantity behind it as well as quality to a degree whether that be toxic or not is obviously up to the interpretation of the person but inherently the deck is better because of how much support is around it you look at cash tira the deck was just better because of all the support that it had with a rise heart and everything else you look at valiant smashers and obviously there's multiple different types of archetypes in this set but i want to primarily look at centurions because arguably i think that's the best one centurions has primera trudea and emmet six for their monsters that's really it you need all three of those monsters to be able to get to that crimson dragon which then gets you into that king calamity on the opponent's turn other than that you're outside of like some spells which is like really only two well, besides the field spell, well, I'll give you three, and then you basically have one trap to play because you're not going to play the counter trap in the main deck because it's not good going second, so you'd side deck it at most. It's like, 
there's nothing there. Like, yes, you have the non-engine to play, but if you're like me, you're bricking on all the non-engine. Oh, well, I'll just play a Fenrir, like a little three-copy Fenrir package. Cool. Now I'm going to get Nibiru because now I'm walking into five summons. And it's just so baby back bullshit. And I'm so sick and tired of it. You know, why can't we have decks that out of the gate are good with the deck build pack? Now, I'm sure a lot of you are going to say, well, Avery, look at Purely. Look at Rescue Ace. Look at, to a much lesser extent, Grand Creators with the Adventure Package. That Adventure Package was insane when it came out. It guaranteed every deck that didn't care about its normal summon because of Rite of Aramiser. It guaranteed you an Omni Negate with that Wandering Griffin Rider. Purely, I will give you, was good out of the gate. But they had a lot of better shit than Centurion's getting. Or that they got, rather. You look at Rescue Ace. Rescue Ace was okay when they first came out. But... It wasn't until the Dia Bell Star package that they really got the consistency that they needed to be good. Not that they were necessarily bad, but they certainly weren't having the numbers that we are seeing now post uh, Age of Overlord. Had to think of the name there for a second. I'm very tired in case you can't tell. And with Purely, because of the fact that you had a lot of non-engine space, the deck also worked better than even Centurion because... Centurion's monsters don't really do anything. Like, you look at Centurion Legatia. It's a 3,500 beat stick. It's cute. You draw a card on summon and pop an opponent's monster with the highest attack. But that's only good going second. So really, all it does going first is that you're drawing a card. You look at Purely. You put five materials on a Noir, which is easy AF. You have an unaffected big-ass cat that can also bounce a card by detaching two materials from Grave or Field. So... Instantly, that card, I would argue, is better than Legadia because if you drop out of Legadia, the Purely player can just bounce it with the Noir. Like, the support for Purely was way better. And I understand that not every archetype or deck in general is made evenly, but when you have a deck like Centurion that, like, you're really trying to push this set, you have to make sure that all of the support is as good, if not better, than Purely. I think Purely is, like, the perfect level of power creep to design cards at in the sense of making them on equal footing with all the other meta decks that are already established by already established meta decks i mean things like that have already been out for a while sprite i know it's not really a meta deck but it's to a much lesser extent rescue ace tier the horus bisteel deck thing dragon link like chimera branded you name off all these things flunderies to a lesser extent you name off all these decks that we're seeing in the meta and then, like, there's a little turd on the floor, and its name is Centurion. Because, like, if you fart on the deck, it fucking loses. Like, it, okay, you you don't, you don't can't really drill it. Like, they don't care about being drilled. You can't nib them because they usually build their board in four summons or less. But, like, if you ash them or you imperm the Primera, if they don't have extension into, like, Trudea, like, the Centurion player is just going to fucking lose. And it's so asinine to me because especially whenever someone like me wants to play the deck and it's the new, you know, hot deck, hot archetype that's, you know, in town, you really can't because since we're in such a diverse meta, people are playing at least nine hand traps, but I would say on average, like, 12, maybe 15 if they've got the space. How are you playing a Calamity Turbo deck like Centurion uh, when there's so many hand traps and negations running the fuck around like kids on a playground? And it's like, uh, you, you, it, there's no reason to buy the product. There's no reason to play this new deck. Now, I know come 2024 in Maze and Millennium, we get Bonfire. But <clears throat> the thing is, by the time 2024 rolls around, the power creep's just going to get higher. We're going to get Phantom Nightmare. That's going to have new stuff in there. Horus will get new support. Not that Centurion will be bad, but I think that they'll still be a tier two to rogue deck at best. Especially if Konami just decides out of nowhere to ban King Calamity, then the deck just dies because that's all that it's good at. You know, they drop out Crimson Dragon. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to pivot to playing Cosmic Blazar? Cool, you have an Omni Negate. Let me drop a Kaiju on your fat ass or let me bait out your Negate and go from there. Same thing as having like just a Quasar on the board. Like Quasar is an overglorified Baron. That's that's all it is, which is really weird to think about considering that Quasar used to be a wing condition back in the day. <laughs> but even with Bonfire, like 
Bonfire raises the consistency and power level of any other decks that can play Pyro Monsters. So Centurion may go from here to here, but all the decks that are better than Centurion will go from here to here. And it's like, there's no difference. Like you just make Centurion a little bit more consistent. Congratulations. Like it doesn't matter. In fact, I would argue that Bonfire makes the deck worse in a way because now if you get Droll, you really lose the fucking ball game because you're going to go Bonfire to Trudea. You get Drolled. Cute. Summon Trudea. Trudea put itself in Primera in the back row. Primera summons itself. You can't search for the stand-up. So, like, what are you doing if you don't have the field spell? Like, it's it's dog water to me. Whereas, like, without that search, you could just go Primera search stand-up, and then they draw you, and you're like, okay, cool. I've already got the field spell, so I'm just going to sit here and play with myself. Like, you don't care. So, can you tell that I hate hand traps? Because anytime I try and play test these fucking decks... All I do is get hit with like a gallstone Nibiru up my butt or I get hit with the perfectly timed Ash or I get hit with, like I just did about five minutes ago, a D shifter and a feather storm from the Thunder player game one and three because they're just that good on EDO Pro and they just always draw better than me. Jesus Christ. Like this shit really bothers me. And again, the whole point I'm saying with these deck build packs is that it makes the decks that, well, I should say archetypes, it makes the archetypes out of these deck build packs basically unplayable out of the gate. They're just dead on arrival because they don't have the level of support and consistency that these other established meta decks do to where one ash farts on your board and you just lose. Like there's nothing that you can do. So it's like, why even release these deck build packs in the first place? Unless it's something generically good enough, like, uh, I was about to say Brandon, Brave Adventure was then something like that's pretty good but that that was an outlier honestly and i don't think we've seen anything that good since purely being able to be a deck on its own that could stand on its own two feet <clears throat> guys sorry i'm losing my voice thank you so much for watching let me know what you think down in the comments below my off kilter is there just something i'm missing i've been trying dogmatica cards with century on it actually seems kind of good but i don't know man i really want to play this deck guys thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video